Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. These are very familiar words, even to those of us who may not spend a lot of time reading scripture or studying the Psalms. We recognize and remember these words because we hear them surprisingly often, not just at church, but also in places where people need comfort. Hospitals, nursing homes, memorial services, funerals. I think that's why we remember these words, why they stand out to us, because they are, in fact, very comforting. Especially when we're in a dark place and hope is very hard to come by. In those moments, we need to believe, to know that we are not alone and left to fend for ourselves. We want a loving and powerful presence to be with us, to lead us, to restore our souls and our hope, to stand with us even in the face of our enemies, and to reassure us that this too shall pass. Things may never be like they were before, but a future is possible. During those times, we are grateful to God, and we rejoice that we can claim, the Lord is my shepherd. But on an everyday basis, I'm guessing that many of us are not really all that excited about being called sheep. In fact, I bet that most of us wanted to be Maureen on the radio station in The Shepherd and be the leaders, not the sheep. Even if we were all unique, we weren't excited about the sheep. Now, having been raised in a suburban environment, I'm not really all that familiar with shepherds or sheep. Um, the only sheep I've seen are in a petting zoo. Uh, but based on what I've read, being a shepherd is a lot of hard work with low pay and it's pretty dangerous. Especially back in the time of Jesus in the ancient Near East, sheep were very, very valuable, and they were critical to the economy. They provided a lot of the, the means that people had to survive. So protecting them was an important job. But the job was not one that everybody wanted. It was lonely, it was smelly, and as the scripture points out, a good shepherd had to be willing to do whatever it takes to defend the sheep around them. Harm always seemed to be lurking for the sheep, whether it was in terms of predators or dangerous terrain. So the shepherd had to be on the lookout and ready to lay down one's life to keep them safe. But as unattractive as that job description might sound to many of us, it still sounds more complimentary, perhaps, than being labeled a sheep. Because today, and probably even then, the reputation of sheep isn't what most of us aspire to or what we want for our children. Go out and be a good sheep. We think of sheep as followers, sometimes even to the point of disaster. They're forever vulnerable to attack, whether they're young or they're old. They can never grow up and take care of themselves, move out and find their own. Just saying. <laughs> they continually need help to take care of themselves, to, to be finding good food, to prepare that home, and they need the group, a good shepherd, to survive. They have no real singular identity. One of the questions you didn't ask the children is, what's the plural of sheep? It's sheep. <laughs> so all of this leads us to stereotype sheep is not very smart, although actually like many stereotypes, that is not true. Researchers in the past 20 years have spent a lot of time studying sheep, especially in areas of the world where sheep are still really, really important. And they found that sheep were actually surprisingly intelligent, with impressive memory and recognition skills. They have very good peripheral vision, their forward vision is not so great, but their peripheral vision is really good. And there was a study in China that found that sheep can recognize and remember at least 50 individual faces for more than two years. That's actually impressive 
especially when you realize that that's longer than many humans. So aside from being relatively smart, sheep can be playful and joyful, and they actually have complex social structures. They build friendships, they stick up for one another in fights, and they feel sad when their friends are sent to the slaughter. So it's probably time for us to start showing sheep a bit more respect. But I'm guessing that even with all of that newfound knowledge about sheep, most of us aren't still 100% thrilled with the idea of being called sheep. It feels so passive versus active, antithetical to our just-do-it culture. It implies that I'm vulnerable and I need others. And particularly bothersome, it declares that I'm not in control. None of those are particularly good feelings. However, they are feelings that I need to embrace in order to have the fullest relationship possible with God as part of the beloved community. The writer of the Gospel of John tries to make it very clear to his audience and to us that Jesus wants to be in relationship with us. No matter what we look like, pink hair, leg warmers, what have you. Jesus wants to be in relationship with us and is willing to do whatever it takes to give us life more abundantly. He knows every sheep in the flock individually and is always open to having more joy. If they are willing to let him, he will guide and protect them. But one has to be willing to accept the role of sheep. He is the good shepherd. And unlike the hired hand whose primary concern is his or her own well-being at the expense of the flock, Jesus is willing to be executed for speaking truth to power on behalf of those who have no voice, no privilege. As Christians, we have proclaimed our faith in God and committed ourselves to worship, learning, and following in the ways of Christ. But on a practical basis, what does it mean for us to live as Jesus' sheep? To accept that God is God alone. Sometimes that means we have to get busy, but sometimes that means we have to let go and let God be God. To accept that we are beloved just because we respond to God's voice, not because of what we do. We don't have to earn God's love. We are precious even when we don't feel that we are worthy. And here's the tricky part. Others are precious too, even or perhaps especially those we don't think are worthy. To be a sheep of Jesus means to acknowledge that we need God and each other. It is a joy to always be able to unburden our hearts to God because God is never too busy and no joy or concern is too insignificant or overwhelming to share. But it's also a blessing to be able to give and receive kindness from one another. But sometimes it's a struggle to be vulnerable enough to admit that I need help. Being a sheep is perhaps more complex than it sounds. But luckily we don't have to do it alone. With the Lord as our shepherd, we're going to be all right. Amen.